Hi, my name is Emanuele Tavares. I'm from Brazil and I study biomedicine at the University of Huerta. And today I have the pleasure to be meeting and talking with Catalin Carico, who is the Nobel Prize Laureate in Physiology or Medicine of 2023. Would you like to introduce a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Katalin Kariko, as you just said, and um, I am originally from Hungary. I get my education in Hungary and my uh, degree. I am basically a biochemist. And when I was 30 years old, I went to the United States and uh, did the rest of the work there. And uh, I am happy to be here mm -hmm. and talk to you today. Great. We usually get asked when we're children if we know what we want to be in the future. Do you think that you had an answer to that when you were a child? I don't think that I, <laughs> I knew that. I, um, I love science and um, was interested in many, many things mm. which uh, I watched around in our house, our household. Mm. And uh, I was curious about, but I think all of the child is like that. I was just curious. What went through your mind when you heard that you had won the Nobel Prize of 2023? <laughs> You know, is um, people saying that oh, Cuddy, ev every scientist is dreaming about getting a Nobel Prize. Mm. I never had such a dream. Really? No, I, I dreaming about doing research and not uh, getting some kind of award. Mm. And and of course, it is a, it's a absolutely great privilege to belong to those group of <laughs> the best best scientists that received this award and um, that's what you know you look at there and somebody who discovered blood types and get a Nobel Prize or you know Marshall Berry who discovered that actually you know ulcer is caused by bacteria and many other things I was reading about and and belong to this group of mm. scientists I mean that's uh, Mm. That's the real privilege. Mm -hmm. Were you expecting or hoping for anything specifically when you started with your research into mRNA? I uh, again, I am not a visionary, <laughs> and I was just uh, you know excited. Mm. Uh, I learned all of these interesting things about viruses. I thought they are so smart how they figure out get around the immune system. But I believe that you just have to go with the flow, and then if you have some. Uh, opportunity to work in a laboratory, mm. just start. It doesn't matter what it is. Get your hands wet mm. and think about and be around with the mm. scientists who will guide you. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's important. Mm. Now that's great to hear. <laughs> and uh, what do you think the success means to you? Yeah, you know, I read about how people define success, mm. you know. Some say that success is that you can get up after you failed and how many times you still get up and move on with the same enthusiasm. That's the success. Other one colleague said that, you know, did you know that the success is measured at how many language your Wikipedia page is translated? No, I never heard about that. That's measured the success, how successful you are. And uh, for me is... Um, uh, for me, the real success was when I heard back from, uh, for example, an elderly home that um, uh, the, those who were living there were already vaccinated, but only one vaccine they received. And one week later, the first person came down with mm. uh, COVID. And, uh, and all of a sudden, many of them get uh, infected but nobody died. And they realized because they already had one dose of vaccine was sufficient mm. to protect them. And, and do you know, for uh, reading and seeing, they send me pictures, you know, they celebrated that uh, occasion that prior to that, if in an elderly home, they had somebody was infected, usually many uh, residents died there. Mm. And so for me is, uh, you know, the happiness that I could help but for me, is uh, recognition, you know, it was not as important. For me, it was enough that I know that I did something. Mm. But uh, to know the whole world, it was, for me, it was never mm. a priority. Mm -hmm. And how have you dealt with disappointments in your career? I, um, when I was in high school, I learned from Janos Scheyer, Hans Scheyer, who coined the word stress, 
how to handle it. And so every time, what is the mantra he's saying, you have to ask what I can do. Mm-hmm. So it's not, uh, you know, when disappointment was there and not say that, oh, my supervisor should do that or, you know, the grant agency or those who reviewed my paper should <laughs> accept it. No, what I can do. And then when I was reading the criticism, let's say that, um, you know, reading and I said, oh, these people did not understand. And mm. instead of blaming them, saying that they are stupid, they don't understand, I say again, they did not understand. Probably I did not explain well. So always what I can do, write better, do more experiment, clear about what was the findings. Mm. And so that's that's how I deal with Always look for what I can do, mm. not others mm. and not to blame others mm. and uh, and not to compare you know myself mm. with others like uh, because you always could see that somebody is um, you know maybe world class and advancing more and promoted more and you see oh that's not fair but not it's not comparing yourself mm. because if you already pay attention what is about others you already took away attention, what you can do. And if you focus on what you can do, is, mm. is, uh, then you can advance your knowledge. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> great to hear. And um, about lab results, how do you think that negative lab results can have a significance on your work? So I had a quote on the wall. It was from Leonardo da Vinci. It said that uh, experiment never errs, only your expectation because you did an experiment which you expected the result for a different Mm -hmm. so that the experiment you had to understand you know you said oh didn't work because you expected something and you didn't get Mm -hmm. that but you have to understand why and uh, you know that Mm -hmm. um, reminded me that uh, I just have to understand better you ask a question as a scientist you always ask a question and then you expect that you get an answer and usually you get 10 more questions because you don't get, you expected something and you get something else. And then you try to figure out why. And then you do, do more experiments and um, you might never get the answer for the original <laughs> one. But uh, that's the fun part. I have to emphasize, you know, doing uh, science is so much fun. And um, I know that in uh, 20, 30 years there, it, uh, For example, at the University of Pennsylvania, where I work, people consider me unsuccessful because, you know, I was demoted from my position and eventually 10 years ago I was terminated there. But I had, uh, I felt successful because in the lab I was in full control. I did another experiment, figuring out something and and, uh, I could see the progress and it it was fun. Mm -hmm. And do you think they work better on your own or with others? I, I mean, I was uh, happy to work uh, with others in a team at uh, when I went to uh, university, when I went actually BioNTech, because there was a, a company and uh, I felt that in the company we have a goal, not that getting more publication and some push up some numbers, but more like that we have to have a product which helps somebody, which is helpful. And, uh, and then everybody worked together. There were no publication, nothing. We we have to have the product. And everybody worked together. Mm-hmm. Much better than in the academia. It's more competition and, uh, and the goal is another paper and mm-hmm. getting more money, more grants. And uh, But I work uh, by myself because even uh, I was 58 years old when I was finished at University of Pennsylvania. I did all of the experiment by myself. Mm-hmm. So... I, um, you know, pour the gel, run the sample, seed the cell, culture the bacteria, isolated plasmids, and made the RNA, everything. Mm. And I, I knew what, uh, mm. how much it takes. And uh, so later when I work with colleagues, you know, I mm. knew that if something is five minutes or <laughs> five hours. Mm. Awesome. No, it's great to know more about your story and how it's been for you. And it's a really pleasure to have been here with you to have this talk. Thank you for inviting me.